The hat's so nice, by the way. Oh, thank you. That's so cute. cute. Yeah. Is it a sloth? Yeah, that, that's, oh. that's a sloth. So nice. I was, it was an Instagram ad, and they were like, yeah, buy two and just pay one. I was like, okay, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time in eight months. Welcome to another episode of Unsigned Berlin. Today, we have uh, two members of yours, Karim, and we have Emmanuel and Janer. And yeah, so welcome, guys. Welcome to Unsigned Berlin. Hi, hi. Thanks Thanks for having us. And this is All Red. all read by by <laughs> yours, yours <laughs> Kareem um, and first I would, this is kind of a question that we don't like to ask because it's usually it's like oh we just decided on it but the name is interesting to me why did you choose yours Kareem um, basically it was we had another project running like up to one year ago um, and we decided we wanted to head in another direction music-wise and also from our approach. So we wanted to start a new project, um, something that was more intimate, something that was um, where you can see and hear that we are trying to reach the audience and uh, on a deeper level. Um, and we found it easier to express ourselves and the stories we want to tell through a fictional character. So we introduced Karim. Okay. Um, Karim is something someone like a, a more distant friend that checks in with you from time to time, like maybe every other month or something like that, and just tells you his story, what he what he went through in the past, um, relationships that failed or went good with parents, with family members, with uh, loved ones. So, yeah. So it's like, it's sort of like, uh, I guess letters, I haven't... Yeah. Yeah, but, kind of, kind but like or texts or whatever, or kind of messages. Like that, yes. from, like, um, why the name Kareem? Um, I think like mainly because I thought that name is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Like I think the sound of Kareem is just beautiful. But also we want like to have a name that kind of stands between two worlds because that's how we feel a lot sometimes. Like, mm -hmm. like that. Sorry, that's how we feel a lot. And like in Germany, Kareem is kind of a common name, but at the same time, you just don't associated with Germany in general. Like yeah, you think, yeah. oh, that's from far away, from like Oriental stuff on flying carpets or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and so that kind of just made sense to take that name. And like Emmanuel said, we added the yours in front of it just to like to get that more intimate setting. Yeah. And also like to give it more of a, a band context because just naming us Karim would have been cool too, but you would just think, oh, it's that one person that does music. Yeah, for And sure. it's it's important to us to also like see us as a collective mm -hmm. and not just like a musician. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Would you guys call yourself a collective before you would call yourself a band? Or is that just... Yeah, definitely. Interesting. Yeah. I find that more common these days that people are leaning towards that. Yeah, Whether I think it's it's more of a, of a border for us to just call us a band. It's more classical yeah. more classical approach and this is not what, what we uh, identify us with totally mm -hmm. that's true are you also when you're doing songwriting and kind of and you just the whole song song making process is it kind of everyone has everyone's contributing and it's not sort of like oh he's a songwriter or we'll write the songs together and then take it to a producer everyone like i don't know when when people say they're in a collective for me i kind of assume that someone's doing the visual someone's doing the production someone's doing the songwriting that kind of thing it's kind of like that with us. Um, Jana is doing um, like the majority of the of the work when it comes to songwriting, the lyrics. Um, it's Constantine and me who do most of the stuff when it comes to production and um, song structures. We do that together. And we also have Sebastian who's just really laying in these bass parts. Uh, so everyone everyone plays his his part in in this in our scenarios when we write songs when we produce. Yeah. yeah. With the visuals, you have, it's all really like tightly executed, if that makes sense. Like you have the photography side, which is very consistent. And then sort of the text and everything for your, I think for All Red? 
There's yeah, the lyric video. Yeah, there's the like illustration. It's like almost stop motion. Oh yeah. And there's like oh. these characters that are also consistent through other songs too. Like yeah. I think you guys have one one of your sub, like Spotify canvases. It's like the yeah. character. Mm -hmm. Is that like how did that how does that fit? And I'm like taking your question. Sorry. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> um, but how did how do those characters fit in with the yours Karim kind of character? Or is it just more like fun visuals? Does it fit into the story or is it kind it, of it does kind of fit in into the story because like we like we do wanna give the project a face, but like we didn't want the face to be like of any of us. So we just we prefer like to stay in the background and just let the music and the visuals talk. And uh, we've gotten to know like a very cool friend of ours now who's called Falk and he's like beautiful in drawing stuff like that and we loved it like when you presented that so we from the start on we were like thinking okay it would be cool to have like to, to have a character that you could also like kind of give some gadgets and be like that's a signature cap mm -hmm. or whatever or a signature shirt like so you have a you have an association but um it kind of made sense to us to say okay let's let's do it more in a comic or cartoon style instead of like making it real yeah. like uh, the gorillas yeah kind of yeah. is he also doing your photography and um i guess graphic design uh no he he's he's just doing the videos and mm -hmm. like the characters uh we do have other people for the pictures or for the designs cool. and those are f film uh most of them are yes mm -hmm. oh yeah. okay because yeah. it's cool yeah i thought they were maybe done with like a like Y2K era camera where it's like flash and kind of because mm -hmm. yeah. you get the separation yeah, between yeah. the foreground. Um, was that like something you guys really thought about or it was just something that was happening around you? Maybe someone's into analog photography and it just kind of happened. I would say that we, were, we weren't particularly into this style of photo photography before that. It was just that the the artist, the photo photographer, was really good at this and had 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 this vision with us. Mm -hmm. And once he executed this uh, executed it this way, we were just so happy with it. It looked mm -hmm. so good, so we just thought we sh we should roll with it right. and keep it like uniform in that's in that kind of sense, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you want to change that going forward in terms of like you've released a lot of music in a pretty short amount of time? Um, and maybe you want to move on to a different sort of visual era or anything, or do you just want to kind of keep playing with what you're doing now? Um, that's, that's actually a good question. Mm -hmm. Um, I like, we do want to roll with it, but we're also open for changes. Like we don't mm -hmm. always have to have that cartoon character. Like I could also imagine like getting that character in like in real person, but with this, like the, the signature. Uh, items we put on it so yeah so like that like ideas like that are always totally cool for us mm -hmm. it depends like we'll just have to see where, where we're going yeah but like the main idea was like just to get get the lights out of uh, uh of us and on that character yeah that's really difficult to translate to social media too yes definitely yeah mm -hmm. yes it is have you had anything where you had like a really good success with that where you're like oh we love how this turned out in terms of bringing the Kareem or the the um, fictional character to a visual medium for social media? Or is there anything you're like mm -hmm. thinking about trying but don't know maybe how to execute? We've had a couple of ideas. Um, we can't really just put, in, put them out there right now, but mm -hmm. um, since the project, part, project is also really uh, quite um, quite young and the idea of visualizing Kareem as this fictional and comic-esque character yeah. is also executed re recently. Mm. We think um, we want to roll with that um, f from, for, for right now and changing that is also on the agenda, but right. how we want to do that, we, we're, try we're trying to figure out um, step by step. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it also always depends on the music like we'll do in future. Mm -hmm. And it's always, unfortunately, a, a budget question. Mm. So, True. Yeah. Yeah, like, so yeah. the like music guides the visuals rather than the visuals guiding the music, obviously. Yeah, kind of, yeah. You. yeah. When you're songwriting, <laughs> yeah. are you kind of trying to imagine what the character of Kareem would say 
or is it more self-expression and then later you relate it to the concept? Oh, yeah, good question. Okay. Um, I think... Like it, it is more stuff like that we experience, but like we we just hide in that character. Mm -hmm. kind That's of. cool. Mm -hmm. Like like it, it's it's not like that that it's it's a more private way for us to deal with it without like having everybody be like, oh okay, like this is I know that guy, mm -hmm. I know yeah, that yeah. story. So it's uh, that way. It's way more comfortable for us to deal with certain things, mm -hmm. and also like to express them. Yeah. And that that was also like kind of an idea behind that character because um i mean we're a four-headed collective band mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. <laughs> and collective let's go <laughs> collective. <laughs> and it, it's difficult like to have like a, a storyline while having the experiences and the emotions yeah. of four people like you you'll naturally have to compromise and we didn't want to compromise in that way of a character you could actually like get access to all those people Mm -hmm. and like just deal with all the emotions and stories that's cool because yeah. rather than each person in the collective putting on a mask or like putting on a persona all of you can kind of pour your emotions into this yeah. one yeah. character yeah. which is you can all hide behind like yeah, together exactly. yeah. we, like which is a good, a good thing i feel like for some of the deeper emotion stuff but can yeah. i apply that same question to like is it you guys or is it the like essence of Karim in how you post on social media because I feel like you guys have like two types of posts there either one is kind of more funny playful light and then you also have this other side where you ask the deeper questions or ask kind of to get more engagement on the band and and what people think like is that you or is that still Karim talking through every post and every social media Presence. I wouldn't say that it's Kareem talking to the to the followers on every post. Um, it's kind of a two way street. Sometimes it's us as a band connecting with our with our fans, with our followers, and just showing what we're doing. That's why we also post pictures of ourselves and not just animations mm -hmm. of Kareem. Mm -hmm. um, but in other in other photos and other things we share, we want to connect with them on a deeper level. It's um, and as we said, it's uh, more comfortable for us to do that through this fictional character, through Karim. So in those posts, Karim is talking to the followers, yeah. Interesting, cool. It's a nice balance between kind yeah. of funny and, and serious. So, Thank yeah. You. I also like the, what was it for All Red? Like the send it to your crush, I dare you, in your bio. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> I will. <laughs> send it to my crush. It's a nice in incentive to... To get your music out there i like that so thanks yeah in terms of finding a sound how long were you guys working um with songwriting with doing the production and everything and just making music before you released baby steps first single all right yeah yeah that, that was the first single of the new project mm -hmm. um it took us a long time as i said before that we had another project running um, yeah. and we really we also released an ep under, under that project and a couple of singles um but um, during that time, we weren't self-produced. We had a producer with us. And it was really cool because we learned a lot through those four years, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but we also ended up realizing that this is not really our pro pro um, product, yeah. um, 100%. We always had to compromise in a certain form. Yep. And we reached a point where we were like to really put things into the real world in how we envisioned them we need to produce ourselves and mm -hmm. so we started i think a year ago with the last ep right yeah with year the last and a half, EP. maybe even two i'm not sure yeah I th yeah i think a year and a half right. we, we we started a year a year and a half ago with uh, producing ourselves so Very mm -hmm. cool. yeah from since the uh, since then we just stayed like that yeah, I've noticed the vocals are very like very consistent, which is really nice. Like each song, even though it's different, like theme wise, mm -hmm. the vocals just are. I can clearly it's it's a really nice through line, oh, like nice. through through your songs, like That's even if hear. they vary. So like, does that mean as a producer, like you have the same effects going on the vocals each time that you kind of default to and then customize um, for each song, or is it always different? But you have that. 
with the last EP, it was pretty different for the for the different songs. Mm -hmm. um, and but this year with the songs we released, it, it released it was it was more consistent. Like yeah. same kind of delays, same kind of reverbs. Mm -hmm. and, I really noticed that um, a similar style of compression used on the vocals. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Oh, nice, cool. Okay, cool. I was worried. <laughs> I was like, hmm, I wondered if they uh, use the same things. No, here. you were right. Good ears. <laughs> no, no, but uh, that's awesome, though. Really enjoyed. Really enjoyed that. Is there something from the last kind of one and a half years ish of of learning production that really clicked, and you felt like that one idea or that one discovery leveled up what you were doing a lot? Um, I would say definitely the use of delays and reverbs. Um, before, like, like two years ago, we tend to we, we tend to overuse those um, effects. So yeah. it was kind of blurring the whole mix just because we wanted everything to be big and have this huge huge reverb on it. Mm -hmm. But um, we kind of liked the idea of having dry vocals uh, also at times and using delays and reverbs as really special effects for certain moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool when you talk about wanting it big, so then putting it through a ton of, you know, verb or delay. Like, but I think in it actually makes it smaller and like sound yeah, further distant. away, more yeah. distant, yeah. which is like, which is such an interesting thing to learn as you go deeper into mm -hmm. production, right? Where the things you think are kind of counterintuitive. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. cool that you guys are like getting the the huge, like a bigger sound with little like smaller tweaks to them yeah yeah well, more intimate as well right yeah, yeah. right totally yeah the, there's that's um i think there was one huge aspect you wanted the the mm -hmm. voice to, to, uh, to come closer to yeah. the listener so having tons of rever reverbs and delays on it wouldn't help that yeah you also released the first single connected to initiative music yeah what was your experience like with that how did you find them and um, what did you kind of have to do to prepare for applying for that, which is a, a grant for people who don't know, um, for artists? Yeah. Um, I mean, I can't really talk that much about the application process mm -hmm. because fortunately we had someone do that for us or like, oh, nice. or like, like take the main part and just ask us some questions. Yeah. But in general, the process with Initiative Musik is, 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 is just great. I mean, like... Mm -hmm. They, they give you so much budget that you can use for your project and that, that way you can also think a little bit bigger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 like there's nothing bad I could say about it. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely Sweet. not. I mean, it's it's like free money. <laughs> yeah, <point. laughs> that's the <laughs> point, right? Yeah, yeah who, would, like, who, who would talk about free money? <laughs> yeah. Um, at that point, were you planning an uh, EP or an album or was it still like lots of singles? to be scheduled or what was the kind of plan for the band when you were first releasing for the collective? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we actually kind of thought it, it would be uh, like the, before we got like the uh, initiative music thing and stuff mm -hmm. like that, we, we were just thinking single by single, just like, because otherwise we wouldn't be able like to afford all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Just releasing every two months, maybe a single. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, when you get the Initiative Musik uh, scholarship, is, is that the word? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, it's oh, I, grant. Uh, grant. Grant, yeah. yeah, yeah. Grant, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you do have to like think in a project uh, and also like in a specific time span because they just say, yeah. they say like you have to spend all that money in a year or yeah. otherwise I don't know what will happen otherwise because that didn't happen to us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know what happens we, we've if I don't all, spend the money. <laughs> we, we've always been good at spending money. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm knocking at your door. Excuse me. Um... um uh, which can also like be stressing sometimes because a very, I mean, I think like a lot of producers and musicians and artists can connect for like for, for you always want more time for your project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, you, like it's never finished. You always want to like, ah, okay, but what about a, a tweak this and here and then and mm -hmm. we could also like put in that part. And um, so that, that can be quite stressing when you do have like a schedule that you have to like to yeah. be in time. But... I think that's just like the first world problem in that case. So. Yeah, it's a good problem to have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So did that really kind of set the fire under you guys to to work harder, having more of like a financial support, or do you think there are kind of pros and cons to both? Where 
maybe you're, you know, you're on a lower budget, so there's like it's more passionate. Or do you feel like there's there's a difference between your releases with that and maybe something that's a lower budget? I think there there is a difference, um, but it 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 mostly has benefits to have more funds to mm-hmm. to promote music, to make music videos, and for production and mixing mastering. Mm. It oh, puts true. more pressure on, on on us to to deliver in a, in a certain in a certain time frame, mm-hmm. but that's actually also a good thing because I mean, as Jana said, artists always want to have more time mm-hmm. when it comes to writing songs, when it comes to producing songs. But um, just taking more time with the song is not necessarily guaranteeing a, a better song. Yeah, totally. So sometimes you need that pressure to just get it done and make quick decisions and get better at making good decisions really quickly. Totally. Mm-hmm. Artists need that so bad. Yeah. That, yeah. Well, actually, I thought of a bad thing. I think like automatically when you get like more money to spend on your project, the expectations also go higher. Mm. Yes. And mm. like that can be quite disappointing when you release a single and it's like, oh, mm. like I spent so much money and it's 500 streams on Spotify. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like that's also like. I was trying to think when you, when you started to say like um, there's the higher expectations. For me, I feel like, because I, I can't afford to pay someone to mix a track, for example, I'll be like, oh, my mixing has to be really good for this, but also there's only so much I can do, right? Like I'll finish and be like, I can't have it super, super professionally mixed because I can't afford to. Was there anything like that where you were, where you've set, you had an opportunity then to spend less time doing stuff that's like promotion, which really sucks if, especially for musicians because it's like, yeah. <laughs> this is not <laughs> what we wanted to do. Um, was there anything like that that you were like, oh, finally we can not have to do this horrible part of it? Like production wise, things really didn't really change for us because we were paying uh, for mixing and mastering engineers before that. Before yeah. that. Um, but definitely with the promotion, as you said, um, mm-hmm. we used to do that by ourselves really sucked because it was very, 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 very difficult to like see through this Facebook manager, fa- Facebook ad manager and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, so you were happy to give that to someone else. Um, so we didn't have to bother anymore. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. As an artist <laughs> to do your own yeah. promotion. So amen to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, sorry, go. So I also like think like the worst part of promotion is like that you kind of, start to forget about the concept or the things why, like why you were doing that whole project or well, like what's the idea of the yeah. project and start to adapt like to oh what works good for promotion and mm-hmm. I think like that's the worst like like uh, I, I can still see ourselves do that yeah um, like going after likes or like anything like that mm-hmm. and afterwards you're like that isn't what the project was about. So yeah. why, why mm-hmm. did I do a lip sync video or something like that? And yeah. Um, yeah, I think like that's the worst part of it, like psychologically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You said when you finished the last project, you decided you want to do something more intimate. Was there anything else you learned from doing the last project that you wanted to change for this new, for yours, Kareem? I think if that, if, uh, if we had to pick one thing, mm-hmm. it would be... Um, during the par- process of writing the songs, we at the last in the last um, in the last EP, we recorded the vocals, the last we wrote the lyrics, the last, and we didn't want to do that again. Mm. So, also when it comes to vocal melodies and all that stuff, we like made the made the instrumental we uh, instrumental and um, and composed that part, and the vocals were just sitting on top of it. Okay. So. We wanted to have another approach where we just incorporate the vocals from the beginning on, even though, even though the lyrics came later in the process, mm-hmm. um, the vocal melodies and how we structured the song was more heavily influenced by the vocals at this time. So you guys had like an empty structure of the instrumental, yeah. and then you kind of like yeah, it was more yeah, the more like that. Yeah. Interesting. Is that the most like different way you've written a song as? The collective, or it was there another tune or body of work that you you did something completely completely different than normal in terms of songwriting or composition. You mean on the, on this project, or and it could be anything. But I just was wondering if you had if you went even further with 
with that? Oh, I like, don't think so. I think so. So that was the most different. Yeah. You guys went in terms of direction. Yeah. Interesting. How much are you fine tuning when you have something that's like to finished song? Is it kind of that was a moment and we expressed what we wanted to express and now it's done? Or are you keeping it on your computer and revisiting every once a month and seeing what you can improve? Um, I, I think like as far as a record goes, like when the project is done, it's done. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of stuff we do uh, when it comes to live shows or mm -hmm. you know, anything like that. Like we always try and uh, adapt our, our past projects like to the new projects to be like have a cohesive and also like a uh, good, like to, to have a cohesive and yeah, to have a cohesive show like who, who, mm -hmm. where you just feel like, okay, like this is, this is a whole concept. Like all the things are, Blending, blending, blending in together. Mm -hmm. So therefore, um, for the live shows, it's kind of a different thing. Like we always have those projects open. Yeah. But we do not tend to open them again. Like, oh, what about we could remaster that or remix that or maybe like change a project up a little bit. Do you guys ever f um, feel like releasing alternate versions or does that come out in your live shows where maybe you change some things from the song, how it is already? Or I would that say that, that comes out in our mm -hmm. live shows. Yeah. Okay, cool. We had the idea of um, putting out like remixes or altern alternative versions of uh, songs we've re released before, mm -hmm. but um, ultimately decided against it because we wanted to put the like the, uh, the the songs out how they were intended to sound like, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, so we preserved that for the live shows. Nice. And how does it change? Is it just in, in speed because maybe you guys are feeling it and like on stage, or is it chord changes? I mean, solo is over. Everything, everything, everything. Every, every, every like tempo changes. <laughs> everything. Really, other, yeah. Other yeah. chords, instruments, um, cool. other, beat. other beats under it. Everything, so everything awesome. changes. Did like I say everything? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's really everything. So, it can um, be enough of it of everything. Yeah. That's awesome. So, are you playing with the backing track, yeah. and then playing? instruments with it yes oh. how is that in terms of um getting the timing right and is somewhere someone with a trigger ready to start the song and then yeah um it's usually me who triggers the songs and starts mm -hmm. and stops them and skips parts or something like that um so we are always in sync with it mm -hmm. um i think all of us except for sebastian have like a metronome in their ear okay. like, to to really know where we are in, in mm -hmm. the set list and in the songs. Yeah. And even with all that going on, was there ever a moment when you're performing where you where you were all like in kind of telepathy where you're like, dang, we all kind of knew exactly when to come in or to change it or like do those moments happen or has that happened? Um, I think those moments used to happen when we like had, uh, had a setup where not three of us had a metronome. Yeah, so you had to rely uh, on that more. Yeah, you know. Um, mm. So, um, but it, uh, we had, we definitely definitely had those moments where we, uh, where where it just was uh, me who had the the click in the ear, and mm. all the other ones just had to kind of guess, but they knew. So cool. Yeah. What are you using for that? Is it like a project file on your laptop or triggers or? I mean, we we do perform with Ableton, mm -hmm. so we use a MIDI trigger to start sequences and scenes yeah. in the in the mm -hmm. session view. I think. So, yeah, 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 yeah. How's your experience been with learning that? Ableton, uh, Ableton or, like the live version live, as well, okay. which is such a for me is very difficult to get my head around it because it's such a different yeah. approach. It took me it took me some time. Definitely took me some time, and there are still moments where we just think how does this pro uh, how does this program work yeah <laughs> because uh I, I think it was just a couple of days ago because we are now preparing for our for our next live show mm -hmm. and um there was a clip that wasn't really um synced with the tempo and we didn't right. know why so, and we had to search for half an hour and it was just one button that wasn't clicked on and yeah. we didn't know why it wasn't clicked on in the first place but um yeah it's just uh yeah, always keeps us on us on our toes. I think. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like Jenga. Like yeah. you pull out one block and it's just <laughs> all like it all falls apart. Yeah, but that's cool though. And um, 
Was there definitely a, a learning curve with the live playing? Or did you guys have experience prior to the collective and you felt pretty ready? I think there was a learning curve. Yeah. Like, uh, we kind of did like the first shows always together. Mm -hmm. I think that applies to all of us. Yeah. Um, so I think like our very first show was probably very bad. <laughs> no, <laughs> but, but it's yeah. the first one, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, totally. It's a different thing. Are and there any are there any venues that you um have that you really want to play and you look at and you're like, this is such a beautiful venue or such like a you just want to be on stage there? Does that make sense? Yeah, I understand the question. I mean, um, I actually used to think like that and be like, yeah, I want to play that venue or like this is my dream and have like a million people chant to a song in that venue. Yeah. And then like some years after that thought, I was like, yeah, that's pretty stupid. Like mm -hmm. stop thinking that way. But like I think half a year ago, I went to a concert of Niels Fromm and the Funkhaus here in Berlin. That's yeah. amazing. And that venue was just beautiful. I was like, damn, I want to play here <laughs> <laughs> and catch myself like in that process again. Um, but I think in general, we just, we just happy like to have to play wherever we can. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And I think like the more important thing than a venue is like the ambience. Definitely. And yeah. also, yeah. also yeah. the crowd and like how the music works. So speaking of the crowd and your listeners, who do you think is listening most to yours, Kareem? Like what is the, the type of person or, you know, what do you, what does a fan look like or right now? Yeah. My mom. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yeah. <laughs> My mom. <laughs> In fact, that she's the only one watching us now. <laughs> no, but really, or, or, or even if you have a goal of who is your, who is your audience here? Like who are the people that are coming and listening to the shows and listening to the streams and the, the music and all that. Yeah. Who are I, they? I mean, like looking at the fact that um, Karim is, uh, is a character who's like chatting with, with friends from with distant friends. So we would think um, since, he since he embodies us to a certain extent, we would mm -hmm. think the listeners of our music should be or would be people that are maybe in the, in, in the same age as us and also live in like urban spaces, maybe big cities are mm -hmm. a bit lost when it comes to human connections and relationships and just want to want to get by and just find some kind of inner peace. Yeah. Cool. That's a great description. Or also just feel overwhelmed for whatever yeah. reason or don't even know the reason why they feel overwhelmed. Like, mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. that's a feeling we do get a lot especially like on the previous project, like the first EP of your screen. Um, yeah, f I think you pretty much nailed it. Yeah. You, was yeah. that feeling something you guys had talked about maybe in between the projects or did it just kind of come through the music and it's just become something that's kind of like, you know, you all share? I think we, do you mean projects in, in the sense of the EPs or between our um, first project and yours, Karim? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, we, um, we talked about this, this matter, um, I think, at the end of our first project, before we started Yos Karim, and came to the conclusion that we should express ourselves in a way where we feel comfortable. And um, the consequence or the, the result of that was Yos Karim and mm -hmm. the first project we put out. Nice. I think it's also like a huge difference because, like, to me, the first project was more like uh, just songs. Like, it it wasn't that much connected to us. Like this project is, yeah. mm -hmm. were mainly like just songs, and then you like put lyrics on it, maybe tell stories in the lyrics. But it it didn't have any meaning to us. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. You're just yeah. making making music you like, yeah, but not of. like trying to express something really. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, what kind of lyrics do I want to put on that? Whatever, do it. But. Mm -hmm. And that that's not the way right now. Like yeah. this, like right now, we're really like thinking from every sentence to sentence, every word to word. Interesting. You said you start with often vocals that aren't lyrics. When you want to add lyrics to that, do you kind of is it a logical approach of this is what the song sounds like it 
like this is what the feeling is from the song so this is what I should write about or is it more like improvising and seeing what words come and then working from there both it's kind of like it, uh yeah it's kind of both like I can't mm -hmm. really frame it it just happens like sometimes you just have like one sentence in your ear and for example for the last single like paint my nails all red like that's what sentence was in the end and we're like okay just keep on moving from that yeah. and that's where like the song just went on uh but for other songs you you do just through the instrumentation and all the ambient sounds you just you get that certain feeling yeah and that kind of keeps you in a ballpark like yeah. at least for me are, uh, there, are there any songwriters you look at if you're feeling stuck but you're like this this songwriter is always does it an, like an amazing job of whatever yeah yeah of, of definitely there are very lot very lot actually like i can't name them all but i think like the best songwriter on this planet right now is probably kendrick lamar right. like whenever i listen to a record of, of him you're, you're just like Poof. Mm -hmm. just um is there a specific album that you feel like has his best songwriting yeah yeah uh, i think like to me it's to pimp a butterfly mm -hmm. by kendrick lamar i would also like say like maybe not my favorite album but like when you're looking at the artistry of it it's the best album definitely for me yeah like that, that's just so beautifully executed everything just blends yeah. them together it's amazing um but there, there are also like a lot of people who who do good, get to that level do you have anyone like that for production um i really can't name one producer where i think this is exactly how i want to um, how, how I want our music to sound like. Mm -hmm. um, but more, more like for inspiration of, oh, I, there's a, I want to have a rhythm that feels like this, I'm going to go look at this person. Um, I think, um, I can't name them right now I, mm -hmm. off, yeah, off yeah. the top of my head, but it's also mostly hip-hop producers interest, mm -hmm. interesting. Interesting. Same, honestly. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I think we are pretty heavily influenced from just like the core of like hip hop and rap music, mm -hmm. even though it translates in, in tr it translates into something really different in the end. Mm -hmm. That's always cool. I think that happens often when an artist listens to a band that's really different from their own mm -hmm. music sonically, but they make oh in a similar world. I feel like because I feel like your um, the R and B sound, I guess, um, is is very connected to hip-hop obviously and um in terms of the having a concept album and the songwriting style and everything feels to me much more like kind of r&b hip-hop yeah. um and yeah like S steve lacy and um that kind of world of uh and the illustrations too you know you got a lot more i feel yeah. like a lot more hip-hop groups doing yeah true. more in illustration even like you know de la soul they're like more yeah. Yeah. But that's sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. Well, we've done about 45 minutes. Um, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Time flies, guys. Wow. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about before we finish up? Anything? You know something? Can be something to promote or just like. Hey, a but cool the problem is we hate promoting stuff. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, I could be like, hey, I can't do buy, hey. buy tickets to a new show in October, uh, listen to a single or whatever. But can you lip sync <laughs> that? <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I think like on on a vinyl I bought like two years ago, it was Marvin Gaye's uh, What's Going On. Yeah. Like he also like wrote a beautiful skit on that, uh, on the backside of the album. He was like, yeah, I could like write stuff like... Uh, uh, this is the best record, and then listen to it, and then about uh, that. Also, he went on like, but that's not what it's about, and I don't want to do that, and I love yeah. that. I mean, ob obviously, Marvin Gaye could pull it off at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, I don't need that anymore. <laughs> so this, re this record's gonna sell itself anyway. So <laughs> that's awesome. To have but but I, I I love I love that like like that approach to music and to art in general. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Anything nice. else? That was pretty pretty solid ending. Yeah, yeah, I think Dang. so. Well, the, the wrap it up, wrap it up. The wise <laughs> words of Marvin Gaye, guys. <laughs> the um. EP is out, or a three track uh, compilation. And yeah, follow. Thank you for listening for everyone. Yeah, thank you, guys. Um, and we'll keep everyone updated. And yours, Kareem. Woohoo! Yeah, thank you. thank you very much for coming. Yeah, thanks again for having us. <laughs> Got awesome. it. Yeah.